And obviously, I mean, they've pushed up all the lanes. They've got great map position. They've got the heroes that can do the DPS and the, the Sable Rush. Why not rush? Just takes your lead and makes you even further ahead. Yeah, and, and just and just at the moment where uh, E-Home's heroes were respawning, um, why not take Rush? I mean, they're, they're down a few people. Not not now necessarily, but um, they decided, well, you know, we're ahead. Uh, we can safely take Rush, and that's exactly what they're doing. It seems to remind me quite a lot about when, when you're watching StarCraft and you see even Hero vs. Puma. Great early game harass coming out by a Hero. He sees that Puma's reacting perfectly, trying to build up units to defend, making sure he's still in the game. And as a result, what does Hero do? He goes home and he establishes a lead, he builds up more tech, he gets more items as such. Yeah. He, he just makes his lead m even more significant. Yeah. If um, Navi all look like they're pushing middle and Ehome have to respond by TPing middle to defend, then that's just gold wasted. He has three heroes defending a tower while they watch their spectre farm. You know, he's behind on levels, behind on gold. I don't see a way for them to come back in the game. He's picked up phase boots, he's got Vanguard, but I mean Oh, AAL is coming in, that's quite cute. Um he's still he's still not a threat yet in fights. He's not a, a hero that you have to kill very urgently. Um and I think that that's a huge problem for the, some of the style of the of the Asian uh Dota teams at the moment in Dota 2. In Dota 1 they had it down. They got the strategy right, they got the metagame right. Um, but in Dota 2, I haven't I haven't been impressed by an Asian Asian team. Who uh, who are who are dominating Dota 2 these days? Uh, I mean, or Dota um, well, nationwide, nation well by nationality. What would you say? Is okay, well, or is it just really sparse and spread out? Okay, so Dota 2 at the moment very much dominated by the Europeans. We saw in this weekend uh, Dota 2 won by Wild Honey Badges, um, a European mixed European team, obviously. Or X's uh, line is just being caught out a little bit. Picks up invisibility rune, has to use invisibility rune in no trouble at all. If that wasn't an invis invisibility rune, haha, <laughs> I'm saying it like the retard, then um, maybe a lot more trouble for, for that little line. Um, anyway, yeah, so the Europeans are dominating Dota 2. We've seen how Navi won the international, Navi won um, by far the international. Thing beating E-Home in the finals. Um, we saw ESWC, we saw great games in ESWC uh, so far by Dota 2 standards. But for me, it, it still seems to be lacking that little bit. Windrunner misses everything. That was quite poor by Windrunner. Still Not getting the last shot in. And uh, TPing out. I don't know what's up here. I think they can sense that um, Navi looking for a pick, looking for a way in to, to fight. Spectre obviously can farm wherever he wants as long as he's not going to get ganked by 5. He can always join a team fight using Haunt. And in a defensive position like this, using Haunt defensively probably isn't actually the, the best idea. You can see the Greater Hawk here. Oh, in invisible. But uh, it seems that my TV has just gone off. So, Lutano, what's your, uh, what's your opinion on um, Dota 2, the, the, the visual of Dota 2 so far? Oh, um... Looks really good. Um, as well, I, I think I said this before, but Valve have done a really good job at um, at, at making this game look look really great. Um, there yeah. comes the video. Yeah, there, oh, there and we're missing out. a huge fight as the video just comes back. Um, Weaver getting kill on the Beastmaster. Beastmaster instant buyback. That was so noob as I kicked the power the, the power out the TV. Navi getting a, a Dendi getting a great hook on the line. Line looks like he will get away. He's not tanking too much. Titan to get a kill on the Pudge. I think that's one of the first times the Pudge has died. But um, Spectre dies. Buyback straight away. The, the Night Stalker is just running around tanking, to be honest. Um, that was a little bit silly by Arsart. Um, Titan to getting another kill there. Double kill for Crystal Maiden, though. Very surprising. And Ancient Apparition dies. But what is key, key is that the Spectre is still alive. Double kill for the Spectre after the buyback. He still had to buy back. Then he bought back. And I think that the Spectre is going to go down here. Almost definitely. Dying eventually to the Pudge. Uh, Weaver's still in the mix. He's very, very low. 120 health. Um, he's got a Vitality Booster, Ring of Bazzi, Hood of Defiance, Power Trades, Magic Wand. Don't think he wants to finish that um, Vanguard as such. Maybe, I mean, he's got the Hood of Defiance. The block is hugely significant at this stage of the game. Probably going to save that. Maybe go for a Heart later. Maybe go for a Radiance now if he can afford it. 
Hot Hunter taking on Pudgia. Um, is Pudgeon low health? Nah. I, don't, I don't think very much can come from this other than Dandy getting pushed off lane and harassed. And that's something they're willing to do. Oh, oh. X joins the fray though. Was that a hook that came in, I think, on the line? Uh, being pollied and eventually taken go. down by Tidehunter, despite the Ancient Apparition ulti that came in. It would have been maybe a little bit more spectacular if the AA ulti was high level, insta give the line. I think then Dendi would have had a fighting chance. Um, yeah, I think the visuals so far have been quite impressive. I'd like to see the full product though. I, I think it's very unfair to, or as Night Stalker goes on, Beastmaster middle. Puppy is coming in, Pool Beast is coming to try to save the Beastmaster, and actually they might save him. He's been silenced, or oh, avoided again, and slowed, and they ultimately get the get the kill. Crystal Maiden tanking a little bit as he runs around the outside. Um, yeah, so sorry, as I was saying, I think that the visuals have to only be assessed really right at the end. Some people have been whining about the visuals, saying this model doesn't look good, Storm Panda shouldn't be an actual frog, I mean, what the hell, not a panda. <laughs> and I think that's as we've seen with a lot of other Valve games, in beta, they don't look good, they don't run good. Valve will release a decent product at the end of the day. And I think that that's like, that's like the Valve promise as such. And we, we have to really trust Icefrog and trust Valve to, to provide that for us. Yeah, and how's the, the networking situation being still? I heard a lot of people complaining about, um, well, from South Africa especially, um, how, you, you, how, the, how the games um, are are structured in, in, the, in the networking uh, uh, sense. Um. Okay, well, I mean, at, at before the, the, the huge open invite, as, well, not the open invite, but the huge release of keys, we didn't really see, um, we were having a lot, quite a few networking issues, uh, a lot of very high latency of uh, five, oh, Weaver picks up Radiance, if five uh, South Africans were matchmaking, but they seem to have fixed this, out, fixed this up a bit. We saw the servers were down this weekend. That was obviously very unfortunate. I'm not actually sure exactly what was happening at the time, and um, and yeah, I don't I don't think that um, they'd be willing to release a game that was like blatantly flawed for a certain demographic. The Steam Cloud is a very clever idea, very well thought out idea, and as I say, I don't think they'll ever release a, a game that that will they'll be poor. Um, I think if anything. It's just going to be about user adoption. It's about, it's going to be about getting uh, a fight happening top here. When runner drops the Night Stalker, three on four on five on one. It's like playing a new pub. Five on one, five man mid, five man <laughs> mid. Um, yeah, I love the radiance animation on creeps here though. I think that's very very cool. You see it here. You can see it's almost like the life yeah. draining out of them. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Um, look, the Dota engine, the, the Warcraft engine, l very limited compared to this. They, you know, there's only so many things they could do in the game, and this just it opens up so many more doors. Asfrog, pedantic at balancing, very systematic, very well structured. You know, if, if there's if there's anything we can do to make the game better, it's just to give more power to Asfrog, and to make like to trust in him really. Yeah, know? he's he's ta he's done a good job of taking over Dota. And um, improving it um, version by version, he, he's just done a really good job um, in the community. And I mean, this game has become massive. And you know, as far as esports goes, Dota is m is huge. And it's uh, you know, it's, we can give a lot of thanks to Astro for that. Yeah, I mean, definitely for a game that's. I mean, it's actually quite funny how like two of the biggest games in uh, esports world. Um, and when I say two of that, I don't mean the two biggest. I'm saying two, two of the the many are mods, Counter Strike and Dota. Yeah. M map mod. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> From the community, basically. Yeah. So uh, yeah. And well, I mean, Portal was another game that was not not uh, not as a competitive esport, but a game that came from the community. We see a lot of great ideas that you know the crowd as such comes up with, and um, yeah, I think it's great that that like been given such an opportunity to be developed um, by some of the best game designers in the world to to this level. So although it's still in its infancy, and I wrote a really interesting article, in my opinion, when I say interesting, um, on this, and I think that, yeah, I think that we can, we can only hope that uh, 
Dotted grows at the same rate that uh, 